it's okay here. Okay, uh, my topic this evening is a hydroponic stone. This is certainly not a common practice. Let's get it next to okay, I can. Um, for those who are not familiar with the hydroponic culture, I'd like to introduce just the, what we do is a, there are four different types of a hydroponic culture. One is the aeroponics. Aeroponics culture root system is a, a, in the air suspended, is a dangling, and just a nutrient solution is a misted intermittently. And that's uh, usually for a smaller scale, not really commercial app uh, application. Most uh, hydroponic culture is a is true hydroponic, it's a water culture. But the root system is a submerged in the water. Yeah, water means water is a nutrient solution. Usually, this is Hoagland solution. Now they use a modified Hoagland solution. Hoagland solution is uh, published in the way back in 1938. And we are still using it, somewhat modified. So that's real hydroponic culture. What we like to talk about is top culture is kind of a, well, one system of a hydroponic culture. Nutrient film technique was developed in England. Now it's a kind of nutrient film laid so that uh, small plants can incorporate the holes in kind of a, in a gravity. It's a solution uh, circulated. And now it's a modified system, nutrient film technique. And now it's a crop king company as a producing gutter system. It's like a same uh, system as a, the film technique, but it's uh, like a gutter system. That's what we, most people in the US uh, production of a vegetable, leafy vegetables, they use an NFT system. Last one, substrate culture. What about tall plants, like tomatoes and eggplants and so on? They have to be supported. Then water culture would not work well. So we use the inert medium, just like a, a prolite or sand or rock wool. And that's what uh, you know, in the industry is using. With that, um, this is a typically uh, NFT system, US version of uh, nutrient film techniques. It is, it is a closed system where nutrient solution is recirculated and reused. And it's a continuous operation, 24 hours, seven days a week. This is a very common system you can find at, uh, anywhere you visit, hydroponic greenhouses. Because of that, we did a lot of evaluation uh, studies on vegetable crop. One time, uh, we used about 64 different cultivars of varieties of lettuce. And then these are some of the pictures, that uh, the results of pictures of those. And we did that for over the several year period. We have also let us cut to evaluation result. I think uh, three plants represent one variety. So we have lots of data for those people who are interested in selecting right type of a cultivar for hydroponic uh, NFT system, for example. Now, this is uh, the system used by Hydrosun Hydroponics in Graston, Minnesota. Yes, you can see there is a gravity flow system. I wish I could have a pointer here that works, but it's a kind of a, new, the gutter is a tilted to one side and then water flows and it's pumped up and recirculated. And that's good. Uh, then we have uh, that, oh, okay. This is a system that uh, Larry's uh, Lettuce in Henderson, North Dakota. This is a production occurs in the warehouse there's no sunlight, natural sunlight. So yeah, you can see the light, it's a LEP light, a light emitting plasma light. It's very expensive. One unit is about $2,100. A lot of, a, it's a good light, it's a full spectrum light, but it's cost is a high. It is uh, something like that. It's the same system, got a system. Now, where's, uh, now about, it's, we uh, uh, had, uh, a very bright student, exchange student from France, maybe 15 years ago, undergraduate student. She took my classes, every class she took, top student, top grade. And she wanted to do experiments and her idea is to enrich vegetables with a micro, you know, nutrient concentration. 
So you're talking about here is a, she's a setting up experiment for enhancing iron and calcium concentration in tissue. So rather than like a buying calcium or iron pills, you eat vegetable, which is the design of vegetable. So she is a good we thought we thought there's a graph that shows it as a concentration in the solution of a particular micronutrient increases, usually tissue concentration increases. And then for doing that, um, we needed some kind of a control, some system that will allow to uh, supply certain concentration of a micronutrient in that case. So we came up with the, the tub culture system. Each tub is a trimmer. You can replicate it. Okay. And then that's what we came up with. So nobody really actually tub culture system. There's no terminology like that, but we just conveniently call tub culture system. And uh, this is uh, what we had. It's an iron enrichment. Um, I wish I had a pointer working. But it's uh, on the left, there'll be controlled. And as time you go to, to the right, there'll be more uh, higher concentration of uh, um, iron in the nutrient solution. Uh, concomitantly, they respond to there to a certain extent. Next. So this is, uh, for example, this is uh, on, the le uh, on the right, that's control. Now the second is uh, some elevated uh, iron concentration in solution. And to the most to right, uh, most right, there'll be higher concentration of uh, iron. You can see the staining of a root system. It's a more brownish color and so on, iron. Somebody who has a high iron concentration in the drinking water, you will experience something like that. So this with it. So usually the top culture system would utilize the uh, just a regular uh, kitchen top. And then we thought we buy just a black uh, color one because the roots don't like to see the light. So it was good. But these days, at that time, we used the black uh, tub, but you don't find that many these days. So we just buy a white one. It looks OK. So it's done as an advantage of a tub culture. We like to use a tub culture system for hydroponic production home. So this tub culture is a, it's a less expensive for insulation and operation cost and NFTs. We need a pumping system, all this. Is, Plant growth in top cultures, we notice all the time, is faster. Only about 20 days from seedling placement the, uh, on the tray, I made it to windows. Yeah, good. that would be good. As compared to about 27 days for NFT system. So again, 20 days, as long as your seedlings are ready, but two week old seedlings, and then you can kind of a, Okay, this is this is some can kind of uh that's okay, maybe the next one is so open. Thank you. Um it's an NFT system. So every 20 days you can kind of get new new uh products and the uh, top system. So I thought that really like the third one is culture allows lettuce production anywhere and in small spaces like a basement of a you know, regular home as long as there's a light okay? and then also because of small uh small units we are dealing with you can schedule of a production the quantity of a production can be easily be adjusted according to how much you need for home use and it's a ventures in market and you can budget kind of a year-round production and so on. With that, uh, so this is the uh, seedling, lettuce seedlings grown about two weeks old on a rock wool slab and each cube has a one seedling and it's in each uh, tray would have a 200 seedlings. The cube will be one, one by one by 1.5 inches. So you can kind of take this individual out and place anchor on top of uh, the styrofoam board. You can see the uh, tubs containing nutrient solution, and you can 
uh, anchor that on top of it. It's uh, right up the moon. The seedlings are a little bit advanced, but uh, it looks okay. Sometimes we get free labor. Uh, each year we get students, about fifth grade students from elementary schools. This is elementary uh, Washington Elementary School students. They came in and said, Lincoln Elementary Schools. And last year, we had 150 students coming in. And it's okay, each by time passes that uh, more students are interested. And I ask, well, I, I, I ask, uh, how many of you really uh, like to eat vegetables? Surprisingly, most of the students raised their hand, you know. And some says, why you are interested in hydroponics? Somebody, some students go, oh, either. No, they saw some uh, information <laughs> about NASA operation for space trips, and so they have to grow vegetables uh, hydroponically in a spaceship. So I think those young people, I'm sure they will be able to travel to outer space some, you know, their, their life. Okay. Next, uh, this, this is a very common variety that's called the Rex RZ for hydroponic culture. It is a bit lettuce and it's a very good uh, growth, very sturdy, and has a least amount of a tipper and so on. So it's a good one. We included this one as this one is one of the top varieties for performance. Now, for home uh, production of a, using tub culture system, again, use the uh, black tubs. It's just easily, you cannot get that one. The white one works quite well. It's not much different. You can see lower right corner, styrofoam form board, about one inch deep, uh, thick, and it's a cut uh, with a razor blade. It's kind of a box cutter, and it's kind of a little bit, it kind of needed some practice. And I think that we're cutting several boards that so you become expert. Most of the students working in the, uh, in, in my, uh, uh, layer, they have expert on that, you know, cut and a little bit slanted inward cut, you know, and then uh, you can adjust number of uh, holes. We use a nine hole for tub, but if you grow spinach, it'll be probably you can, can double the size and some, number of uh, holes. Upper right corner, we have a, a aerating pump. This is the purchase from Walmart. It's a $12. It has two outlets and can each be connected to actually branch and then four tubs. So one $12 pump can satisfy about eight tubs. It's very easy. You don't need a lot of air. The whirlpool is just a very strong, you know, just a, just a gentle bubble production. And you have a air bubbles, uh, they are uh, air stones and then uh, plastic uh, tubing. And you will see in this picture, it's the air bubbling on the right side. It's a more nutrient solution containing about 150 ppm nitrogen concentration used with uh, 20, 20, 20 fertilizer. And the left is a, it's a little lower than that. It's a, just a bubbling. And now this one is more, it's a, some of you probably just listen and don't pay much attention, but this is what university people use to say balance the nutrient ions according to uh, water analysis. You know, you send uh, uh, your water samples to the extension services and you know, all your NDSU soil testing lab, and you will get, I wish I had a pointer, but uh, the blue letter second line as a in water, say top is a, on the calcium, and let's go to magnesium, for example. Then actually, magnesium and calcium, potassium, uh, and ammonium, those are all cations or positively charged ions. That's a left side. Right side, it'll be nitrate, sulfate, and phosphate, but negatively charged. Anions. So usually it's an equal basis. Total anionic molecular balance is the same as a total cationic uh, charge. So you, it always comes to equal. So if you can check that on, I mean, if you, there's any uh, deviation that so made, the soil testing lab made a mistake. So, so you get that. You will see, for example, let's go to 
say magnesium. We need a two millicoburn. And water has 1.2 millicoburn. And so you have to add 1.8 millicoburn in it. By way of go down a little bit more, magnesium nitrate. It provides one part cationic magnesium go to the right uh, and one part anionic nitrate. One to one ratio. So you kind of budget out your balance and then we will uh, give this, um, I mean, you have a, a water testing result. You just send it to Tom, Cal, or myself, and I, we, can, we can go over this and we can just uh, describe exactly. Those are for people, professional growers. So I have to work with them all the time. We have a lot of them with different states and so on. And so now that's a little bit complicated, but depending on, you can see one more I like at it, on the far second column on the right. That's a calcium carbonate. That is a 2.1. That is the making uh, plant uh, water with the alkaline conditions. You have to neutralize with the same milliequivalent of far left, the second column on the left, we are doing, but possibly most of uh, the uh, uh, people are watching this program uh, probably will not have that because they don't have to do that. So I'll go to the next uh, slide. And so you can go ahead and you contact us and then uh, extension service will be, if they cannot solve the night, they will forward that information to me. This picture shows 2020 general purpose fertilizer. It is a soluble fertilizer. Uh, it contains a 20% elemental nitrogen, 20%. P2O5 is an oxide form of phosphorus. 20% potash is a K2O oxide form of potash. So since this is a 20% fertilizer, to make a, on, a, on the right side, to make a 200 ppm nitrogen concentration, which is a very common fertilizer for well, overall use for flowers and vegetables, it works out very well. 200 ppm is 200 milligram per liter. That's for 100 percent fertilizer. Since this is a 20 uh, percent fertilizer, you have to add five times of that. So that means five times 200 milligram. That is a one gram per liter. So then it's a, if you are going to use one uh, gallon, I guess a mistake in it. My typing last night was a kind of I was sleepy when I was typing on that. Three point eight gram has to be changed to kilogram or liter, okay? It's one gallon. So if you have a five gallon bucket, it's be 19 grams. You just use 19 uh, grams of that fertilizer. I just use about two teaspoons. That's good easy. So we do, rather than do so, we use, this is a 20 per 200 ppm fertilizer solution. Look like they add a color in here because of, I think at the beginning, somebody <laughs> said that people drink water and they can tell with the fertilizer water, regular water, so that's why they added blue color in here. So anyway, that color is about 200 ppm. That's a very healthy root system. Uh, um, now, not only nutrients, so uh, go back to that fertilizer, 2020, 20 fertilizer. Most of the cases, you are going to have a very good uh, culture. Now, it may not be balanced, it's just like, a, so it's like a human being, we go out and eat some junk food and some, you don't go to dietitian and get really precisely what amount of, you know, of protein, carbohydrates you have to take and so, you, you do that, you can, it's a little bit super, but we, we don't, you know, I don't do that, so we just go eat junk food or, eat ham, you know, just usually plants adjust themselves. So I think unless there's extreme cases, very low uh, or high concentration of salt or something, we have to do some adjustments. If you have any problem with this, just call me or Tom and I think uh, uh, there will be, uh, we can help you right away, you know, according to water analysis. Now, plants need light for photosynthesis. They have to assimilate carbon dioxide in the air into carbohydrate. It's the first step of a plant growth. Um, here, uh, is, we are lucky. Now, it's the LED technology came on, and you can buy very bright uh, light boxes on the left showing. This top one is a uh, four by eight feet 
uh, LED tubing. It's a, actually LED chips uh, placed inside the tube. And it's very bright, very nice. But I bought this one left to right, left to lower point there, two feet by four feet. That's a good for uh, my uh, uh, basement. It's a laundry room. <laughs> it works out very well. On the right side, there'll be uh, spotlights available. We have a spotlight for 10,000 lumen. It's a very bright. I use that one for my garage. In the, mo in the middle of the night, we go to the garage. It's like a, you know, just a, uh, yeah, clearly just a middle, 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 you know, daylight, you know. And so I use that one, but it's a, but problem is a, that light comes emitted to the uh, laterally to uh, horizontally rather than pointing down. So you have to put a hat on it, you know, reflector or somebody design. I'm going to call a uh, uh, manufacturing company. They come up with a kind of a, make it as a more umbrella and the LED light chips are facing down. That would be really nice. Down one is a uh, flood. Uh, like LED light, this is the brightest as possible that I bought from uh, Home Depot. You have to put them very close to light, you know, so there's a limitations and there's something like that. You have to think about that. This is my laundry room basement. I turned off the light because it's so bright. And uh, uh, to take the I grow uh, microgreens, you know, so that's good. Yeah, they grow. Uh, this is microgreen. See, somebody has to discuss why we get uh, black strips running horizontally. And I thought my cell phone was not good. So I went there, got a new phone. Same thing. So it's a kind of, a, they detect something human I cannot detect, but a camera, the cell phone camera detect. I have to solve that problem. Otherwise, all be strict, you know, all the pictures underneath, you know. But this is sometimes, I wanted to make uh, microgreens very grow, grow really fast. You know, so I didn't make a ton of, you know, I just took a 24 hour day lighting, you know, plant response. So it's not, plants need to go to sleep too, just like a human being. So we need, so this will be typically 16 hour day, eight hour night, just like a human being, you know, you work 16 hours or play 16 hours and then uh, eight hours sleep at night. That works very well for plants. Okay, so you can kind of see. So it's, they started to regreen. You know, that's kind of a not. You know, uh, this is a uh, here is a uh, uh, yeah. Andrew is uh, here next to me, and he came and with the bend was a measuring light intensity at the plant level under two by four LED light. And you can see the way, way down, the deeper the ceiling. Under. But I think those plants are uh, about 10 days old. So but this was a light intensity. The 200 micromole is quite good. Uh, 200 micromole per square meter per second. That is very, uh, you can translate that into lux. Uh, to, you multiply that factor by 50. Then about 10,000 lux. Your bright day you go out will be 15,000, 20,000 lux. So actually, it's like a bright day outdoors, you know. It's not to be peak of a light intensity in summertime, but this is very good. So you can lower the light. And actually, this light allows for 200 micromole to all the way to about 700 micromole level. Now, tomatoes will require twice as much, 400, 450 micromole. So you, uh, if you're going to grow tomato, you have to grow tomato very close or more brighter, brighter. They, you can put more LED chips in. So this is a, where uh, about 10 day old, I brought those, I harvested those uh, plants and I brought, you know, you cannot see it, but later on we can show this. And then I wish it, it was a, I thought it was a live audience that so can give out this uh, harvest is the lettuce. You will see a little later. This is a good, you know, and then, um, again, you have to has check on bubble and so make sure water level goes down. You have to refinish, refurnish. So sometimes if plants are big, you have to maybe do it very, uh, you know, in two, three days, you have to replace, not replace, it's a kind of add more, you know, making sure bubbles are working. And this is a, one of my bedrooms and corner. I put the spotlight there. No problem, it's good. So you have to kind of lower 
the uh, the spotlight in this. So we need a better the highlight intensity spotlighting LED light system. You know. Now this will be my dining area, my dining table area, and we uh, put those lettuce in here. Yes, then it'll be grow well. Again, actually, normally I take the uh, spotlight down very close, like a one foot, uh, you know, uh, above, and it looks very well. You know, so this is a. This uh, Benjamin is uh, checking on whether, uh, whether bubbles is working or not. So I think uh, they are doing special project, and then they will write on it. They, they knew they are working on uh, boron deficiency and toxicity symptoms. So they, they want you know very uh, it's like excellent students, and they're very interested in experience experiments like that. So you will see on top the way down here. There'd be okay, there's a uh, orchid grown hydroponically, hydroponic solutions. So this is the case, you know, hydroponic orchids, uh, we wanted to see with rot, very thick, they're green, they're photosynthesizing. So we uh, use a clear glass and hydroponic solution that dips about one quarter of the root volume. Most plants that are exposed to air that would be very good. So good quality orchids can be maintained, grown actually, you can rebloom. It's a very good system there. Now, this is the uh, four varieties we grew. I harvested those and I brought here. Sorry, you cannot see them though. And then this is uh, four varieties. We had uh, black seed and some very fast growing. Uh, Butterhead is a good one. Or Pricehead or Paris Island is very sweet romaine type of lettuce. And so, if you have extra plants, you can sell maybe local. Uh, stores and so on, and that'll be nice. You can take what the excess uh, uh, vegetable, take them there, talk to, and then uh, maybe you can brag about you have a green thumb. Yeah. So now with a summary, high quality leafy green vegetables like a letter can be grown home for family consumption as well as the local market. Top culture system may allow different uses of a small space, or the efficient use of a small spaces growing leafy greens as long as a Sufficient light intensity is provided. Uh, three, I think it's a, you need more improvement in the LED light, uh, light center. This is a manufacturer's uh, responsibility. With that, uh, I think I like to, this one is mostly fun, it's funded by specialty crop block grant, administered by North Dakota uh, State Agriculture Department, and there's some individuals listed who, who help this project. Thank you. And any questions? How about is, should we show some of these real life plants? Here? So, just, we're going to show some real life plants here. This is it. Can, can the audience is seeing the corner picture. See the corner oh. edge? That's oh, corner picture. Okay. Oh, this is the, the uh, 10 days old uh, at the placement. So, Probably about seven days later, we can harvest in a fully grown one. And then, and also, I thought, I thought this was a live audience. <laughs> so I brought this one as uh, maybe somebody, Tom, you may take this yeah. one <laughs> home. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's good. Uh, Homegrown, okay? So How about think, should we show those little seedlings? That looks interesting. Okay, this one is a younger one, but it, we let we waited for longer, so this be okay. This will it'll take uh, about fifteen days or so to harvest. Okay, yeah. rock wall to get them started. Yeah, get rock wall tubes. Okay, how about we go with some questions here? Uh, how about uh, can you use Miracle Grow fertilizer in a hydro? Of system? course, yes, yes. Rather than twenty twenty twenty, yes. Is there something special about the 2020-20? Not really. It's a very common. It's just a overall usage. It's a very common fertilizer can buy. That's very right. soluble. So 2020-20, people ask where you can purchase it. There's a lot of garden centers web 2020-20, or you can buy it online, of course. All like the commercial fertilizer. Yeah. Most of them. But you just go ahead and use it. whatever fertilizer you can buy about 20 percent fertilizer or just it it varies you know depending on 2020 is just a general purpose you for leafy greens like this one is like the more nitrogen not like the phosphorus is more more 
uh, fruit producing vegetables and so on. So you just start out and you can use the other fertilizer and you run into problem, just to call us, okay? Just, I and adjust your rate. Yeah. And it was about two teaspoons of fertilizer per gallon of water. No, not gallon of water. One, For just five a, this, this is, uh, this is the 12, 12 ounce, or 12, quarts. 12, 12 quarts, and then it's about 11 uh, liter. But you can, you use a little less than that, so it'll be, I consider it as a 10, uh, 10 liter. So 10 gram, 10 gram is just a teaspoon for level spoon, two, two levels, level, level teaspoon, two, two level teaspoons, teaspoons of a 20, 20, 20. It will be fine for anything is a 20, 20, 20, 20. First one is important. Nitrogen concentrate is very important. So if you have a 20% and then if you have a 10% one, you may have to add more. Okay. So it sounds like we need to make a pamphlet on this. How to oh. do this? Because this looks interesting. What's the? Can you estimate what's the cost? Like how much does it cost to make a tub of that lettuce? Oh. Is it like yeah, yeah. twenty bucks or? Oh. Is this just a game or is this gonna? Is this economical? Economically. Grow one tub is that once you invest that the oh, uh, aeration system, $40. it'll last for uh, you know for forty dollars to start. Forty dollars to yeah. get started. But once you're going, it, then it's minuscule to keep going. And really, not, so not it's, really yeah, only even forty dollars to get started is yeah. is not significant. That sounds very yeah. Why don't you come in here? This is uh, Andrew. He's just the uh, one of the best <laughs> students. He's taking my class now. And uh, Andrew can answer something. You know, some extra credit. Huh? Yeah. What about uh, Andrew? Can I grow herbs in this tub? Of course, I do it in my dorm. You do it in your dorm. Wow, you guys are really into green. <laughs> <laughs> it's in your bedrooms, it's in your dorms. Uh, you live this stuff. Um, and we talked about the medium for the seedlings was rock wool, and you just plant the seeds in the. In the, there's a hole in the rock wall that you, they come in cubes. Hole, it comes in cubes. cubes and they already have a hole in them. And you just put the seed in there and saturate the rock wall. And you just leave that in a humid place like a tray until the seeds sprout. And then you transfer them to the water. So what happens is that we take advantage of it continuously growing when it's up. And you can empty uh, and do it. We probably have to have some uh, look at seedling growing cup. Then you can I do see. the transfer continuously yeah. so that you can both a seedling tub and a and then break production later, tub. later later production yeah. and also how often you have to clean the tubs sometimes you see green algae development you probably have to dump and then we you know, use a freshly prepared like, uh, use a, sometimes a, a it happens solution yeah. to yeah. clean them out yeah yes and uh, can you grow the can you use the tub system outside Never outside, tried it. Of course, yeah. Of course, yeah. <laughs> of course, there's yeah, beautiful sure. light outside. Yeah, sure, no, no about problem. The light It'll probably grow faster. Or be. How about, is there a taste difference with hydroponic grown products? And does that add extra iron in? A little uh, uh, extra flavor? We haven't really tasted because of our greenhouse grown ones when we did the experiment. Although our unit that never, we don't use a pesticide or anything like that. We can, but university regulation will not uh, not, not really to eat something tasting. It's uh, we don't you know do that. So home use, yeah, homegrown, yes. But we haven't done uh, home hydroponics iron experiment. So university, we we do tissue analysis, but okay. not taste. Are you using tap water? Yes, tap water. And uh, every time you add water to the tub, do you add more fertilizer along with it? You have to, yeah. But it's better to prepare fertilizer in, say, new tub and make a 10 liter and use a pour in that one. That's the easy right, to start with the first. Yes, mm -hmm. first. Um, how about, how do you feel about using net cups in a styrofoam? Are they Best. needed? That's what I do um, in my dorm, but usually that's for larger plants. These small plants, the styrofoam board, you show them in the holes, it works fine. 
And when you harvest, you just pull out the plant or do you actually cut the... We cut them off. Um, oh, and then it regrows. Oh, no. No, that's it. Yeah. One time harvest. <laughs> For the you lettuce. You don't want to eat the roots, probably. Yeah. Um, what are the air bubble stones? I'm not sure about what that question is. Uh, you just get them from the fish section at Walmart. Okay. They're for aerating aquariums. Okay. Did we bring that one? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, show that. Okay, we'll go show it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just rapid fire questions here. Uh, there's, so cute. Explain. Here's air bubble stones. Oh, Those are the two kinds, yeah. Okay, let's keep it going here. Uh, we answer the question is rock wool for the seedlings. How do you start the seeds? You just plant them in the rock and wool. Yeah, each uh, rock wool cube have a one hole. Cube. Yeah, cube. Which you can purchase from a greenhouse supplier. Yeah. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, they're just as tasty. And one grower likes using coconut coir. Oh, yeah, substrate. same thing. Same, what's it, rock wool rather than, you know, coconut coir. Or you can use yeah, it. It's a little yeah, yeah. Uh, substrate. Sure. Um, we've we've got to get down that question. Like, you see, how much miracle Grow? miracle Grow is a is usually like about a, a 24, 8, 16. It's about the same. So it's same, about the yeah, same. About the it's same. the same. first yeah, number is the yes, critical yeah, one. Yeah, critical one. Yeah, critical one. The burning, the nitrogen. Yes, yeah, nitrogen. So similar to the 20, 20, 20. How, how's your energy bill, man? Is, there, is it going? That's LED light. Is LED light is, uh, they said it's about very uh, uh, energy efficient. So, so I think that. Uh, Somebody says it's been not cheap, you know, half a quarter mm -hmm. of a fluorescent lamp. Uh, and it's much know, more efficient than incandescent light. Of course, and, yeah. Uh, In incandescent you, Would you recommend an LED light over the, the grow lights? I don't know. Grow light is made of uh, what light? But now mm -hmm. it may come with the LED lights. But I think what I like to do is a more larger, you know, kind of a spotlight. I wanted to, you know, the Home Depot, Menards don't sell light intensity bright enough. So I like to go to Border State Electric uh, and see whether they have an industrial light, you know, for the uh, uh, bright light. It can hung, you know, quite high, hang there, and then uh, grow plants underneath. Be nice. Okay, let's keep LED going light here. I'm talking about. Here. Can you use water from a softener? No. Water softening adds sodium in it. Actually, it's aggravating. It's adding more uh, salts into it. You feel smooth, you know, because kind of a what about magnesium replacement with sodium and things. It's not not that. It's so salinity level or salt level we go up. So if you have a home water softener, probably I recommend not to use that for growing plants. Okay. How about what size of pump? Air pump. Air yep. pump that yep. used for an aquarium. Aquarium, very, very. It just uh, you can buy bulk because probably less than ten dollars. But I go to yeah, it's twelve dollars. It's very inexpensive. And you can you can grow almost any herb, any leafy herb. I don't know. Yes. It's just a plant, and there's nothing yeah, right. special right. about it. Yeah. Um. What else here? Oh, they want to. Somebody wants to come to campus and tour your hydroponics. Oh, wonderful! Okay, that's good. Contact You're welcome to do the that. doctor for that. Uh, how about well water that contains iron? Probably worth a try. Mm, iron actually it cures iron toxicity symptoms in plants. We did some iron uh -huh. iron. Increase and usually toxicity symptoms don't occur. Okay. So at yeah, high elevated level, so it should be okay. So unsightly for human consumption, it's be maybe for plants maybe okay. probably okay. Uh, what temperature? Just temperature is a you're concerned about temperature and so on. If you are comfortable, plants are comfortable, they do well. So what happens is 
70 degree Fahrenheit day, usually night temperature 10 degrees lower, 60 degrees. It's like uh, what we do, you know, we in home, home environment. How about can you reuse the styrofoam tops? Yes, if you clean and then use the soapy water, then yes, we can reuse. Yeah, sure. Continually. I think, uh, I think we got everything covered. It's, it's called Rock Wool, W O O L, yes. not Rock and Roll. <laughs> Grodan uh, supplies that. Grodan. Grodan is uh, Grodan. produced uh, from Denmark. They don't have a stone, so they import from other Scandinavian countries and then they, they melt rock and it's just like a volcanic rock this is the rock wool fiber first time was in ben, just in hawaii they're taking an afternoon nap they have to wake up and they get a cobwebs from their face and it's together and that this that started a uh, rock wool. so we do now we just they uh melt rock there's a u.s production sisquana company but i think a growth and rock is a very common one. okay so i would just say if anybody wants detailed information we got a good introduction to it tonight and uh i have a, someone mentioned that rockwell can be bought as sheets from the yes. hardware store yes. and uh, not hardware sheets regular here we have to order through growth and company or uh many horticultural supply companies horticultural supply. anyhow we yeah, got a good introduction tonight. We want to stay on time and get everybody home on a decent hour. And um, let's just say we uh, thank you, Chi Wan. You're welcome. Your greatest thank you for assistant. listening. Or and we, and if, you, if anybody's in any further questions, I can talk. They can contact Chi Wan or myself, and we'll get the detailed information for you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank and you. You're welcome. And uh, I just want to quickly, I saw a couple questions from the previous uh, session that we needed to answer. One was, can I, can I uh, graft a weak plant onto a vigorous rootstock? Will that help uh, invigorate my weak plant? It can. And that's one of the reasons why uh, grafting is done to invigorate the, of course, yeah. the upper portion. Um, mm -hmm. I think uh, we got everything else. Uh, oh, can you use organic waste uh, that you're composting from? Uh, you put it in your cupboard in a sealed container. Can you add that to your composter? Yeah, it's just organic waste. Sure, put in your compost bin. No worries. Okay, we're gonna take.